Okay guys, so while Jiggy and Mitch are editing, I want to play a prank on RJ who's sleeping. <laughs> so I'm borrowing Mitch's lipstick. Ooh, such a beautiful shade for RJ who is sleeping so beautifully. Here we go, my boy squad. Just paint something on his face. <laughs> oh man, oh man, we were so close. <laughs> All right guys, we're eating dinner. This place is called Dong Wan. Awesome. Burgers, pizza, pasta, and more. <gasps> mm, this sounds good. Ooh, how nice. Ooh, an upstairs portion. Cool. Eat, love, pray, hope. Ooh, I like where we sit. This is awesome. We got our own little room here. Okay, so we were just talking about the story of this place. This restaurant is the house of a very famous personality named Lola Bashang. Do you guys know Lola Bashang? Huh? Huh? Okay, so Lola Bashang died, right? She's not alive anymore. No. Okay, so Lola Bashang passed away, but she was known here in the Philippines for being like, you know the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt? She was known for being the narrative in books. And then Philippines adapted TV shows, movies, everything based on Lola Bashang. Well, in all actuality, Lola Bashang is not a woman. Lola Bashang is a male. Lola Bashang was just the pen name of the guy who actually was Lola Bashang. And the guy's name is Severino Reyes. Yes, so that's the history of this place. Yeah, we love all, this, uh, all her stories. It's called Mga Cuento ni Lola Bashang. Like yeah. growing up, wow. So Lola Bashang created this whole series of books and stories. It's a fable. They have like a storyline for kids, a, a lesson to be learned. Very legendary, this Lola Bashang, who is really a male. <laughs> oh, guys, look. Strawberry calamansi? It's called calamansi blush. It's fresh strawberry with syrup at the bottom. Ooh, it kind of reminds me of a Singapore sling. <laughs> so you gotta mix it. What's it like? <laughs> wow. Let me try this. I didn't order it because it's full of sugar. <laughs> and that's my enemy. It's different, it's, I like Can I try it? Juice. Well, you have to... Oh, that's a sugar explosion. <laughs> oh. Well, it's oh my gosh, I have blood type sugar now. Mmm, look at the salad, guys. It smells good. That Parmesan cheese smells so smelly. I love it. And guys, here's a portrait of Severino Reyes, aka Lola Bashang. Uh huh. Interesting, right? Wow, guys, so this was a house. This was his house. It's a pretty beautiful house. Look, and I guess this was the main dining area to his house. I love it. Interesting. Yes, baby back ribs, baby. That's what I ordered. <laughs> love it. Okay, first things first, let's try the salad. Crunchy lettuce, love that. Mmm. 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 Guys, let's try the baby back ribs. Mmm. Mmm. That's some good pork. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Gambas pasta. Gambas pasta, shrimp pasta. Wow, chorizo cebu pasta. Mmm. And burger steak all the way down there. There you go. Mmm. All meat pizza. Yum. Guys, look at the desserts. Oh my goodness, look at that picture. <gasps> it's called an ice cream burger. It's a burger with ice cream between oatmeal cookies. <gasps> dessert cannoli? What? Italian dessert made from pure ricotta cheese, mango, and pineapple slices. Wow. 
And they're apparently famous for their mug cakes. Mug cakes? Dark fudge, red velvet. Oh man. <gasps> Topped with vanilla ice cream. Oh my goodness. Okay, fine. Mm. And I love that I can hug this pillow. I love pillows. I just want to hug. I like hugging. So for those of you guys who know Lola Bashang, this was her bedroom. Well, his bedroom, right? <gasps> Whoa! And it was converted into a dining area. Isn't that interesting, guys? Like, see, I don't, I didn't grow up knowing about Lola Bashang. But for those of you who grew up in the Philippines and know about her tales and fables, this is where she slept. Well, he slept. <laughs> I keep saying him, her. So this place is kind of like a historic dining experience. You're actually dining in Lola Bashang's place, who is actually male. Oh my. Oh, here is deliciousness. <gasps> wow, brownie melt over there. And the cookie butter mug cake. Mmm, oh my goodness. Hey, is this homemade ice cream? <gasps> Ah, uh, the bottom is hot. Oh yeah, ow! Ah, okay, so this is homemade ice cream. And the bottom is freshly baked cake. And I ordered crunchy cookie butter. Let's try it, guys. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. Look at that, yum. Guys, let's try it. Crunchy cookie butter. Um, oh! Mmm! Oh my gosh, that's, this is the tastiest thing I've ever had. Mmm! It's like hot and cold and sweet and ice creamy. Oh! The best! My boy squad. Oh, and it's homemade ice cream. So it's like good quality ice cream. I will subo myself. Mmm! 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 Good, right? RG says it's good too. Mmm. 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 Oh my gosh. So delicious. So delicious. Mmm. 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 Yummy. Guys, our meal was covered by Awil Pass, who apparently is the owner of this place, right? Partner. Wow, that's really nice. Thank you, Sir Awil Pass. That was really great. We love this place. <laughs> Thank you so much. Salamat. All right. Look at these stairs. Yeah, they preserved it well. Man, I want a house like this. Exactly like this. See, they got a lounge area. Finally. Speaking of which, I'm a big fan Hi. of men. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Thank you so You're much so for popular. dinner. Yeah. Guys, this is Owl. Hello. Yes. I'm Owl Paz, one of the owners of Dong Wan. And I'm from DZMM also. I'm also. a big fan of this guy. So Thank guapo. you. The food is so good. Yeah, wow. You. The best. And Remember, and not only the best, it's good, it's also cheap because we believe that even the Dongs. And the ones can yes. eat like dons at Dong Wan. Yes, I love that, guys. Isn't that great? Yes, yeah, see all you right. all in Dong Wan soon, Mother Ignacia branch. And yeah. the address here is? Number 76, Mother Ignacia, corner Scout Reyes. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're the best, Awel. Yes. <laughs> Mabuayang Filipino. Yes. Bye. Oh, thank you guys so much. At last. At last. Mitch and Jiggy, thank you so much. Guys, can you believe we're done? What time is it? It's like 11, right? Yeah, 11. It's like 11 p.m. <gasps> wow, we were here all day long. We were here for 14 hours. Yes. But you know what? This secret project, I can't wait for you guys to see it. I'm so excited. Good morning, my boy squad. Good morning, my boy squad. We are going to give away some prizes. Our first one, RJ, is the winner for our P-pop contest. Yeah, we bought this in Japan and they're like crackers that were sold at a convenience store. Does this have an expiry date? Ah, okay. We have until July to eat it. We asked you guys to come up with a new meaning for P-P-A-P. -P -P. Mm -hmm. And we went through all of the entries and we finally chose one. Mm, we have someone here says, Pusong Pinoy Ang Panalo. 
YouTube account name Ems Santos. Yay! Awesome! M Santos! Congratulations! So it was Pusong Pinoy Ang Panalo. Pinoy Ang Panalo, which means Filipino Heart wins. Wins, yeah. Okay, and we're also giving away this from the other day. Yes, three CDs. Signed. We will sign it. Yeah, we'll sign it. Um, and this here is my debut album. They aren't making these anymore. They were sold back in Canada. Also, this cool YouTube clapper thingy. Cut! Um, and this bag, YouTube Pop Space bag. So, to win these prizes, we asked you in a previous vlog to post hashtag Mabuhay Squad Philosophy. Philosophy. Yeah, and basically post anything um, that characterizes the Mabuhay Squad or any kind of inspiration that you might have acquired through watching our vlogs. A lot of you guys entered and it's really amazing. You guys had so many amazing entries. I was so heartwarmed actually by a lot of them. But we did choose a winner and the winner is Rain de Guzman. Yes, who wrote equality, hashtag Mabuhay Squad philosophy. Whether you're social or masa, all sexes, and gender preferences, pure Pinoy, feel Canadian, and every race there is. We treat everyone equally with the same level of respect. That awesome! Nice. That was nice. Yeah, it was very nice. I love it. Equality! Love for all people. You won, Rain, all of those prizes. The bag, the CDs, and the... Flapper. Flapper. Yes, these are all yours. Uh, email MikeyJBustos at gmail.com. Yep. To claim your prices. Yep. We'll be mailing it to you. Alright, going for a walk. It's lunchtime, 12 noon. Listen, can you guys hear those beautiful birds and cicadas? Those are males singing to females. I love it! Isn't that great? There are many species of insects that stridulate. Insects that create sounds using their body parts. They rub body parts together and it creates sounds like crickets, right? Sing to attract females. Isn't that amazing? They do harana. We humans can use our voices to attract partners, right? <laughs> A beautiful singing voice can elicit feelings of love and lust, I think. <laughs> Wow, look at that tree. They have huge, what fruit is that? Is it jackfruit? Yeah, it's jackfruit. It's beautiful. Awesome. Man, I love this neighborhood. It's so great. Some of the houses here are just gorgeous. Really. I believe this is Barangay Addition Hills. And I love walking through here because I like looking at the houses. And I'm always hoping that a for sale sign will go up because I'm looking to move into a house guys I'm ready I love my condo now but I would like more space I've been living at my condo for almost four years and now I'm ready I'm ready to move wow I think this house is new here oh my are these houses electric fence wow look at this look at this place is that a house <gasps> If that's a house, I would love to live there. <laughs> I love these trees. This neighborhood is so amazingly quiet. I love it. It's so hot. All I hear are birds and like insects. I mean, look at the plants that grow here. Look, look, beautiful. Just amazing tropical plants. I truly, truly love living in the Philippines. Look at this guy. He's having a nap. <laughs> It's their lunch break, so they're napping, these workers. I love this house. Every time I pass here, I always look to see if there's a for sale sign here because I want to buy it. Now, I saw a comment um, from one of you, Mabuhay Squad, um, and some of you actually in the past have been commenting about how awesome it is to have the opportunity to live here in the Philippines. Um, a lot of you guys out there, you Mabuhay Squad, who are outside of the Philippines, look at this and go, wow! You live in a paradise, and it certainly is a paradise. And indeed, I am living out my dream here. I mean, what's there not to love, right? Everything's cheap here in the Philippines. Cost of living is lower. Weather is amazing. There's no winter. It's always hot. We've got beaches, a skip and a hop away, right? What's there not to love? Well, 
I can say in retrospect that moving here, I was not prepared for the process. I... Moving here was nothing like I ever thought it was. It was really an eye-opener. So I wanted to share some helpful tips, my top five tips to surviving the Philippines. And this is particularly for you guys who are outside of the Philippines who might watch these vlogs and say, oh, I wanna move to Philippines. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I wanted to share with you guys my top five tips if that's what you wanna do. And so my first tip for those of you who would like to move to the Philippines from abroad is go in with an open mind. Now, looking back in retrospect, I thought the transition would be fairly easy, right? Um, I was born and grew up in Toronto, Canada to two Filipino migrant parents. Um, and they're super Filipino, as in they speak English like this with Filipino accent. We cooked Filipino food every day. Me, my brother, and all my cousins were first generation Filipino and all of our parents were very, very Filipino. We grew up the Filipino way, right? I always thought, yes, Filipino pride, proud to be Filipino. I love Filipino culture. But in actuality, looking back now, I realized that what I knew as Filipino culture was actually kind of a watered down version of what Filipino culture really is. Like when I moved here, I realized how Canadian I was, like how not Filipino I was. And even to this day, there are times when I feel very Canadian, like I feel very foreign. So I say, if you're gonna move to the Philippines, go in with an open mind because you will be culture shocked. It's a different world out here, different set of rules. Of course, the weather, all those environmental things, they're, it's very, very different. Um, food is very different. So if you're not open-minded when it comes to food, you might have a hard time here because sometimes if you're really picky with food, you may have to end up eating at like restaurants, like high-end restaurants all the time and, and that sort of thing. You have to be willing to kind of rough it. Which is actually my second tip to surviving moving to the Philippines. Be prepared to rough it. I mean, here it's a paradise, right? But it's not like this in all parts of the Philippines. Now, when I first moved here, I wanted to immerse myself in the culture, right? I went in with an open mind. I wanted to live the Filipino life. So, you know, when I moved here, I lived with my Tita Lynn, who is the sister of my Tita in Toronto. And she owns a boarding house, which is like a hostel. It's like a, a big residence where boarders live. So I was living with around 200 boarders and it was really roughing it. Like my room didn't have air conditioning. We didn't have hot water. Of course, most of the residences here have ants everywhere and insects and geckos crawling on the walls. So if you're not prepared for that, you might have a panic attack. <laughs> there are bugs and stuff everywhere. You have to be okay with that. In fact, I remember sleeping one time and there was a big cockroach that crawled on my face in the night and I had to like, you know, shoo it away. So you really have to be prepared to rough it. If you're out in the province, oh my goodness, talk about roughing it. You have to, sometimes the toilets are scary. <laughs> like the, th the thing I liken it to is when you go camping and you have that like, outhouse sometimes it's like that you know you just have to rough it you need to be able to not be afraid to get a little dirty sometimes my third tip is you need patience and when i say patience i'm talking like god given from heaven patience this is one of my biggest things here in the philippines living in the philippines has taught me a patience i never knew why? Because of so many things. Internet, for one, is so slow. Can you believe at my place, the fastest internet they offer is two Mbps? Two Mbps. Meaning these 20 half an hour vlogs take almost three hours to upload. And some of the areas in the Philippines don't have internet. So just little things like that, right? My biggest pet peeve moving to Philippines were taxis. Before the ride apps, the rideshare apps and all of them that came out, thank God they came out, my prayers were answered. But before that, when I was living here and they didn't have those apps, I hated taxis. I hated them with a passion. Why? Because taxis would stop, they'd roll down their window, and they would ask you, where do you want to go? And it's up to them to choose whether they want to take you or not. This is illegal, but taxis still did this. 
it's just crazy. Customer service is another thing that you really have to have patience with because like I was just in Toronto last and I returned a faulty webcam. I had bought a webcam and then I returned it without a fuss. It was so quick, so easy, so convenient. They didn't even ask questions. You try that here in the Philippines, whoa. It's such a frustration. Um, and especially like in call service, my goodness, cable and those kinds of things, even airline tickets. Customer service here in the Philippines has really taught me patience. <laughs> oh my goodness, really. You have to be patient to live here in the Philippines. My fourth tip is to be observant and learn the culture. So when I first moved here, I was like, okay, I, I have to set my goals. I want to learn Tagalog. I want to learn the culture. So things that will make it easy for you to learn the culture is to watch local TV. So I was doing a lot of local TV and I was, well, I was in the TV shows and I learned the culture through being on set and you know doing Filipino showbiz I just naturally was around Tagalog speakers all the time and um, of course I lived in the boarding house they were all Filipino speakers and I listened to Filipino radio so they were always speaking Tagalog these things will help with learning the culture and learning the language and that sort of thing and finally my fifth tip is to have a game plan. Now, when I finally was faced with the decision to move here in the Philippines, I was already a YouTuber with a pretty good following. And when I came here to shoot the Chicharroni Mang Juan commercials, I saw the kind of support that I had here. And by then I was also offered contracts from the TV networks. So my game plan was, okay, it's a pretty big risk to just leave everything behind in Canada and move here. But it was a calculated risk, right? So I had my contracts already there. I had endorsements and I was getting work even if I was living abroad. So my game plan was to test it out. And for those of you who do want to try living here and you want to test what it's like living here I say try what I call the 3612 test and what is a 3612 test those are the months so try staying here for three months check in with yourself say okay how am I doing do I have a plan yet am I making money how do I feel about the Philippines do I still enjoy it and then do the same thing at the six month point and then do the same thing after one year and if you've passed that living in the Philippines is a breeze I find. I found I, I had to check in with myself at three months. I had to go home to Toronto. I had to double check to see if moving to the Philippines was what I really wanted. Then again, I did it after six months and then after one year. So after the one year mark, it was cool, great. For my game plan, I said, you know, I knew that Filipino showbiz was really something else. <laughs> I knew that the turnover of stars here is just crazy. In Canada, we hear about the, the major stars, the biggest stars, right? And we hear about their success stories. Oh, Sam Milby moved from US, Piolo Pasquale moved from US and lived here and look at their careers, they're booming, right? I found that there are so many artists that move here to do show business, right? So many, and a lot of them we never hear about abroad. And a lot of them come here, they have a stint or two in like maybe a movie or a TV show, and then we never hear from them again for whatever reason. One of the biggest things I learned about show business here in the Philippines is it's really a big beast. There is so much going on that you guys don't know about. I'm not saying this to dog Filipino showbiz because a lot of my friends work in Filipino show business but there's a lot of politics, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you guys don't see that I don't want to get into. Just remember, moving here for show business is not easy. One of the things that I thought growing up because all my aunts, titos and uncles are always like, oh you can move to Philippines, show business is easy. You know, you can become famous in the Philippines. It's so easy. No, it's not guys. It's not easy. If you're gonna move here and try to survive a Filipino show business, it's gonna be hard for you. <laughs> if you can somehow have some other kind of income to supplement, then it will really help. Like me, I had my ant store as well. I was selling ant farms through antscanada.com. So I was making foreign dollars, US dollars, 
and was able to use that to help me survive here and save up. Mind you, if you're super good looking and you can speak Tagalog and you're like half Filipino, maybe that's a different story. <laughs> Generally, I find YouTube entertainment like this, like what we're doing, to be a lot more pure than showbiz entertainment. YouTube, what I love about YouTube is it's a purest platform. I control all of my content. I control my own exposure. I don't have to depend on others to book me for TV shows or movies. If I want to be seen, I just upload my content. I upload a parody, I upload these vlogs, and then it connects me with my audience, which is what I love. And you guys are the ones who decide who the stars are, not those businessmen in suits. Sorry, I went on a tangent. So, I had a game plan. I didn't just come here with no plan. Um, so, you need to have a game plan, be prepared to be flexible, and learn and adapt. So guys, those are my five tips to surviving in the Philippines. If you want to move here, and if you can manage to survive moving to the Philippines and starting a life, I say to you, congratulations. And if a part of you feels like you need to move to the Philippines for a change, for something fresh, I say do it. Why? Because you'll never know unless you try. And if there's a voice there wanting you to do it, then I say go for it. If you don't like it, you can always move back, right? At least you would have had those character building moments here in the Philippines. Daddy! 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 My boy is caught on. It's me! I think I'm hearing something. Don't you know you have a son? What? Daddy, I'm downstairs! I think I'm hearing something. I met your Ate Elsie! <gasps>